Welcome to your Mama Moon podcast with interviews and tips from real life for your pregnancy journey from belly to baby. We are Tessa and Nina, and we are passionate about motherhood. Our goal is to give you tools towards a beautiful and empowering experience during labor and a smooth entry into life as a mom. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Mama Moon podcast. We're really, really, really excited and happy to have Johanna and Attila and little Oscar with us today. Um, Johanna and Attila joined us in October last year, it's October 2020, for our Mama Moon full weekend retreat uh, in Germany, close to Berlin. Um, Oscar is their second, uh, Johanna's second child, and uh, and and Attila is uh, is the happy dad, of course. And um, the the beautiful story of the two of them was that they really wanted to have a home birth, which living in Germany is not uh, is not a the normal way to go. So we were really excited to have them on the retreat and um, and spend the weekend with them and get to know them a little better. And in the end, um, the home birth. Uh, happened uh, in Germany and we're really excited that they have um, they've agreed to share their both birth story with us today uh, just to help and inspire, inspire everyone so um, we'll dive right in uh, if you like this episode make sure that you you comment you like you share you share especially with moms to be that need to hear positive birth stories um, but for now let's just uh, dive right in and hear how uh, little Oscar saw the light of this will. Welcome, Johanna and Attila. Great to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Um, maybe do you want to um, do you want to add a little bit up to that intro, short intro that I just did? Do you want to tell a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am Attila. I'm 26 years old, and at the moment I study psychology, um, more or less, like. Uh, before Oscar came, I studied a bit more, now a bit less. <laughs> um, yeah, Oscar is my first baby, and uh, Johanna brought another girl to our relationship. Yeah, my name is Johanna. I'm 38 years old now. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> I'm uh, working as a digital um, expert, a transformer at Deutsche Telekom, currently on maternity leave, of course, and uh, Oscar is my second baby, my first, first boy, oh. boy, oh. as Attila told, we have a, oh. another um, girl, Ona, she's two and a half years now, and yeah, uh, I was a single mom with her, and then we met Attila and Dali, his dog, our dog now. <laughs> So now we are a really, yeah, happy family. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. And so before, I know that we are all eager to hear a little about them and the birth, but I actually also wanted to ask a bit about your pregnancy. So is there, uh, how how was it for you? Was it, uh, how was your pregnancy? Was there anything special other than global pandemic? <laughs> um, the pregnancy, I can't say anything about the the feeling um, of her body but um, this the whole situation was um, you know, well how was it for me it was the first time so it was everything very exciting uh, I was uh, very interested on in all the topic in general like uh, how how he's de developing and um, what are the biological things happening and especially labor and all that kind of stuff was really interesting for me. Um, I'm really impressed about uh, the whole thing, how it works, how biology made it possible. Like it's, it's, really, uh, it's really impressive. Uh, I'm still like uh, really impressed. <laughs> To grow a human being. <laughs> yeah, really. Like, it's, it's kind of yeah. surreal, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. For yeah, me, it was the good. second time being pregnant. Um, and uh, there was a difference to the first pregnancy because um, when I was pregnant with my, with my daughter, I was doing a lot of sports before and I was like very, I don't know, 
sporty and fit and uh, it, I wasn't um, way back where I was before the pregnancy. Mm. So I really felt more tired and was, I don't know, exhausted a lot of times and I didn't get that, that much sleep. So uh, when mm. I was uh, pregnant without a, a toddler on my side, it was like, okay, I'm tired, so I sleep. Mm. And this time it was completely different because you yeah. have to take care of someone else. Yeah. Yeah. But I enjoyed yeah. it anyway. There was not so many things that were, I don't know, mm, hard to do. It was just, I was more tired. Mm. And of course, it was really cute as well when Una, she, she became interested into the big belly and asking what's in there and it's your brother and she was, she was like, I'm, 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 I want to uh, cuddle with my brother and it's, it was really cute. Yeah, and she, she was were asking other people with a bigger belly, do you have a brother inside? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was it, was, it was really uh, funny and cute. So sweet. It's so funny to see how they get interested and how they then perceive the whole process of uh, of growing that mm -hmm. the little, yeah a little sibling. It's amazing. What I think what impressed us a lot when you came to the full weekend retreat in October was how much you were both of you really invested in preparing for for birth and preparing for postpartum. Um, and Johanna, you had done a lot of uh, a lot of things already, um, and you were really because probably also because you wanted to have this home birth, you were really intensely preparing. Can you share a little bit what the things were that you did during your pregnancy that helped you prepare, like in terms of physical exercise, but also in terms of other preparation? Yeah, um, I more or less did the same I did with the first pregnancy. But uh, that time uh, I didn't know about Mama Moon. So this was a new uh, part of the game. Um, but I did a lot of uh, um, prenatal yoga um, and yeah, more or less other sports, but not that much. <laughs> um, and of course it was special because this time there would be the daddy around so it was completely different for um for me uh, so what was interesting for me or what i wanted to focus on when i came to mama moon was um how can i share all these things with attila and do not i don't know um treat him like i know everything better because i've done it before so it, mm. it was more how can we um yeah win as a as a as a team and not as i don't know single players beautiful and yeah and it's i mean the role of a, of having a partner around is yeah it's also so so supportive during the whole process whether it's pregnancy or labor postpartum so super special um about the birth so I'm, I'm, you know, that I'm just sitting here. I'm like super curious. <laughs> How did it start? You know, did you have like an assignment or like a big water splash? Or, <laughs> you know? Not at oh, all. So I begin and then I, I hand okay. over to Attila because then I need to, uh, uh, yeah, uh, go on because he had to to leave the room. <laughs> but um, it was different because. My my uh, daughter came twelve days early, mm. so uh, and Oscar was five days overdue. Yeah, but um, I was like really impatient and nervous, and I I was I don't know done with pregnancy. I didn't enjoy it that much, but just the last two weeks. I yeah, think. belly was really big. She couldn't, couldn't move, move anymore. She, she was like. Uh, but I did a lot of yoga. It was not that I couldn't move, but it was not fun moving. Yeah, exactly. And it was all like here and there aching. And yeah. it was, she, she started to get annoyed yeah. by the belly. And she was like, Oscar. I couldn't come on. sleep well. Um, and I don't know. It was. Yeah. yeah. She just started to get annoyed. Like, <laughs> and uh, I think on. 
on that day during the day we were outside and like almost every day because one dog went one toddler so every time every day in the afternoon you're outside and then we came back home and everything was just a normal day and when Una was sleeping already we were like okay how could we uh, get that thing going like and then we started googling um, for workouts to induce labor yoga <laughs> yeah yoga <laughs> workouts inducing labor and stuff like that and then we, we found a video on youtube like 20 minutes because 20, i was yes. sick doing the 90 minutes of my yoga teacher yes it was just too long and she was like she wants to do something short and we found that this looked something we she could do and uh, she did it and like the already in the last two minutes of that workout she started like uh, ah, I've got some pain and maybe it was too much <laughs> and then like after five minutes the pain started again and five minutes later it started again and we started to track the times and we were like oh it's actually really um, like regular, regular and uh, we thought we waited like one hour and observed it and then we were like okay i think it could be starting now and then we were plan we had a lot of plans like we we're gonna uh, when it starts like last time with her first baby it was it took her 24 hours and we were expecting it wouldn't be that long this time but we didn't expect Maybe it six or eight yeah, hours i yeah. don't know a lot uh, of time and so we, we were like okay maybe we cook something and uh, we, or we, we, go, we go for a walk or something like that and uh, we called her mom that she comes because Una was in the sleeping as well so if, in case she wakes up or whatever that there's someone else as well and um, so when her mom came and we were preparing all the home birth, birthing stuff, like uh, putting towels into foil that you can heat them up, you yeah, know, to and wrap the baby. yeah, to wrap the baby. And we were pre pre preparing a few things. And um, when her mom came, you 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 picked her up. Um, huh? No, she came. She but came she, out. She with didn't. The she yeah. didn't. She didn't ring the bell. So I I went downstairs and picked her up. And uh, when she came, I brought our dog to my parents because we just felt more comfortable when he's not here. Maybe, I don't know if he becomes worried or I don't know what happens. We had the same plan for Una, but she was sleeping since seven. And, yeah. uh, at nine it started. started. At nine, so the idea was that she went around. But... Yeah, but she was there and it just happened everything so quickly actually. And uh, I brought him away, came back. Maybe I think it was around 10, 11. I'm not sure anymore. And uh, she was standing in the bathroom already, like <laughs> at the um, at the at the radiator, holding herself and <laughs> like screaming already. I was like, "Oh, what happened here <laughs> in that short time?" And uh, she was like. Call it it our, was around half past 12, so half past midnight at that point. And she was like, call the midwife. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, you look like we should call her. And then uh, I, I called her and it was, what time was it? Half past, yeah, half past 12. So. And I called her. Yeah, I think. All right. It was there half an hour later. Yeah. So it was... Uh, yeah, you see, I, I can't really, uh, I don't remember the times. It was really <laughs> quick, everything. We were expecting we will have a lot of time and we do this and that and we do some, you yeah. know, what, what we saw here and what we, yeah, what we read there. <laughs> yeah, we had what I mo most liked in the, in the Mama Moon retreat was the idea to have this labor circle that you can do yeah. this and that and relax and do some massage and watch, watch us video whatever so you have things to do while you wait or while you i don't mm. know sleep because last time with my first baby it was a i don't know long period of time to, i don't know do something this time it was completely different the first contractions i recognized around one uh no nine o'clock yeah. o'clock 
and we waited until I don't know 11 then I called my mom then I was sure okay there is something going on this is not like I don't know I had before some uh, mm. really pain in the morning and half an hour later it was over so I really felt okay maybe this could be the thing but I expected I don't know uh, Oscar coming in the morning I don't know um, but uh, our midwife Iris um, told us if it starts in the evening, don't call me, I want to sleep. Yes. Because he had a lot of uh, home birth dates this, um, yeah, around this time. Yes. So I was yeah, talking to Attila, yeah, Iris said we shouldn't call her when it starts in the evening, so let's wait. But then my mom came, I called her around 11, because yes. and then I was sure it's starting and I was, um, yeah, I, I had some concern because Una were here. She was not with her father. Um, so someone needs to take care of her. Uh, then around, yeah, 12 o'clock or, yeah, I, I really, it changed. It was not, um, was not, I don't know, talking and having, I don't know, a chat and then make a minute break to, to breathe and then go on. Um, when my mom came half an hour later, uh, Attila went to, to, to take uh, Dali to his parents. And when he came back, it was just half an hour. It, it completely changed. So it wasn't the, the opening phase or what do you call it? It was like, I don't know, uh, I don't know. The transition, like. Yeah, yeah the end of transition, yeah. it felt like. <laughs> yeah. it, it, I don't know how to, how to stop it any longer. And then we called Iris. Um, she she already started to feel the urge to to press. Push, yeah, or yeah. what? I don't know. And then um, he called Iris. I yes. didn't talk to her because I was busy yeah. with doing I don't know with breathing. breathing and I don't <laughs> know having with, a baby. Yeah, and uh, my mom was with me. And then Una woke up. Yes. So we could hear her from the baby uh, monitor. So Attila went to her room because we we yeah shortly discussed it maybe not the best thing that my mom goes in because she didn't know that she's here. Maybe she know, gets excited yeah, and she doesn't sleep or whatever. Again. Um, so he went to her room and then Iris came half an hour later, um, and then she said, "Okay, I should, I will like listen to three of your urges or your um, contractions." And then she said, okay, can we please uh, leave, the bathroom. leave the bathroom because our bathroom is like just really, really, really small. Tiny. <laughs> you can't, you can't even turn around. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I said, okay. And in our bedroom, there was still the yoga mat from doing this yoga class. Uh, but I said, no, not in this room. It's too close to Ona's room. Let's move to the dining room. And then we just uh, moved the yoga mat to the dining room and she had like a little chair but this very small one mm. but I didn't use it as a chair I use it to just hold myself mm. and um, yeah half an hour later Oscar were there and then I just came back to the room yeah I was, was still in I was still in honor room, trying uh, to get to sleep again and uh, and I was waiting and she wasn't sleeping and then at one point I hear like the baby screaming <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I thought we're going to have a coffee. And <laughs> it was, I was not expecting that it will happen that quickly. It was, he was really fast. And uh, yeah, so at, at that point, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just leaving Ona and uh, Johanna's mom has to come in. So I just left and when I was like, Attila, are you going? <laughs> <laughs> and I just left and came in the in the dining room and there was like Johanna's mom behind um, her back holding her and Johanna on the on the floor and uh, Oscar on her on her belly. He was uh, just not screaming anymore and. Uh, and then we sent Johanna's mom into Una's room, and then I sat at her back, and uh, suddenly Oscar started to scream again. 
<laughs> but did you so did you give birth on a yoga mat? No. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> I was uh, like like squatting, but uh, mm. holding with my um, hands on this bird. Stool, this little yeah. thing. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't use it to sit because I yeah. didn't have the feeling um, that sitting on this might help. And yeah. My mom was uh, really helpful in my back. <laughs> it's, we just yeah. had this, this podcast episode about practical tips how to prepare your home birth environment with, uh, you know, really <laughs> nothing. It doesn't sound like you had a lot of time to prepare everything no. that you wanted to prepare. Yeah, we were like, well, we do some stations here and there and put some post-its on the walls and drink water go to the toilet yeah but <laughs> no plans no. none of that perfect so when you look back at you know that birth happening so quickly and so unexpected in many stages and phases are there things that you say that helped me a lot? I could I could use that something that really worked well, even though the whole preparation that you initially wanted to do sort of fell through the cracks. Yeah, mm, compared to giving birth in a hospital, I I hadn't a bad experience or anything like that. But I think um, I was really relaxed because I was at home. That helped a lot. So, mm. if you are confident and have like um, the feeling this is a natural thing to do, I could recommend Bethany to to moms uh, for the second birth to do it at home. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's also um, if there was because you um, you also described when we met in October that it was not um not so straightforward to organize a home birth as well right so you you do need to like let's say if there would be like any shadow of doubt or whatever you about yourself or the baby that and then you you need that support on the side and i think it's here also is he talking oh. yeah so cute. <laughs> It's good. So now Oscar is replying. So Oscar, so how was it for you? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so sweet. All right. Very good. I've completely forgot what I was saying. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Under Oscar's spell, everybody just uh, watches him. <laughs> yeah. This definitely is a podcast episode to watch on YouTube instead of on Spotify. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. So how were because how how were then the first weeks? So if you think, let's say, about the home birth, and we know already, super chill baby. <laughs> <laughs> how 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 it's been going and maybe any anything that um that surprised you in a good way or in a in a in a way that you would change <laughs> you know share share the wisdom with some other moms out there some other parents out there yeah i um had the plan to really enjoy uh, do you say childbed or postpartum or whatever because mm -hmm. in First time, there wasn't really the chance to do so, but this time I really did nothing like in the, in the household things, but there was Ona, so I <laughs> felt so comfortable not to do anything with her. <laughs> so this was really what was. <laughs> what was special this time? He's a very chatty baby. <laughs> yeah, I had to. I, I was like spending all the time with Ona actually, like because there was no uh, daycare because of the pandemic, and uh, so that was actually it made it quite difficult because uh, 
she's just two and a half years and she's like she needs all the time the, a different care than a, than a four years old child yeah you know and um i think that was a bit dif difficult she was bored and she started to i don't know like she really needed to be entertained. Yeah. And uh, she needed focus. And yeah. my mom was there a lot of times, and especially in the first two weeks. Um, and then we really had to do like um, a new transition phase to the to the daycare again because yeah. we weren't there mm. for six weeks or something like that. So it and was, uh, at home everything has changed as well. She yeah. was like she doesn't want to go. There anymore mm. she wants to be at home she wants to be with oscar and uh it was a bit difficult like this is the transition phase again and yeah i think we you you did the transition phase and uh i think after three weeks um yeah after birth three weeks after birth yeah she went there again so um yeah it's good focus a little bit more on Oscar, but he's a really relaxed and happy baby. So he was, I don't know, sleeping in his basket, on the mm. sofa, uh, on our chair, yeah. in our arms. So he was really... You relaxed. didn't need to carry him all the time. No. You know, he's really like, you can... He was if not he's, crying. No. Seldom that he cries. Like, I think it's such a chatting. Yeah. <laughs> not crying. <laughs> it's it's also such a difficult situation, right? To have a child in the pandemic, especially when you have a toddler around. There's so much going on for everyone. It's a, it's really challenging. So I can only imagine that that puts some extra pressure on on everyone. Yeah. yeah. How is your how is your healing going? How did you recover from birth, Johanna? How did you take some you know, did you did you do something special? How did you did you mm. do any self care? How no, did you? In it was hard not to sit or stand, of course, because of mm. Una. Mm. Um, but the yeah, first two weeks I really felt weak. I didn't have this feeling in the in the first time with Una. Um, so it was really different. I think maybe because it was a very fast labor maybe that's also uh, yeah, a reason i don't know mm. um but um, there was not so much time to to recover and focus on this so i didn't start with um um course <laughs> so i didn't with the, um, with, yeah with, with the, exercises um, the postpartum courses and um yeah I will start um, end of April, mm -hmm. so I, I do some exercises I can do lying down or something to relax my mm -hmm. shoulders, but nothing special until now, but I need to. <laughs> yeah. And I was um, surprised because last time I didn't have any problems with my, with my, uh, with my size. So I could wear all my trousers and shirt and whatever. And this time it took a little bit longer. I was surprised because I didn't have the feeling that this will be a problem. <laughs> yeah. But now yeah, I'm 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 fine. In the beginning it really was the first two weeks I didn't feel so good. Yeah, but you were like you were just she was sleeping and relaxing and uh, she wasn't doing anything like I tried to do everything and well, her mom was here around a lot and you yeah. you had the, you, you got some time just to recover I think right yeah and we had friends and family cooking dinner for yeah. us so they were very yeah they brought us food and it was it was nice yeah, yeah. super helpful yeah. I actually heard about this concept of like a food train that your friends, you know, they kind of like set up like which days and, and yeah. then they, yeah. they bring on certain days the, the food and it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As well. yeah. yeah, very cool. 
And um, so if you if you look back at, at the whole experience, pregnancy labor, the first weeks, um, we always like to ask uh, here about the, let's call it a golden tip. If there was like this one thing, can be more, huh? and can be also one one of each. So one from uh, Johanna, one from Attila, and one from Oscar, since he's very chatty. <laughs> If uh, what, what would you share with with other parents expecting out there and um, yeah, the golden tip. The golden tip. I I, I can just only uh, tell or recommend everyone to prepare. Like mm. um, I'm wondering, like I really I can't believe sometimes how less people uh, families are prepared they don't know anything about uh, the labor process itself the like anything they don't i don't know it's like they don't care i, I have the feeling like most of the dog owners are more prepared about the dog handling than um than uh, uh, future parents about the labor process and everything so my golden tip is really prepare and uh, be a bit more um, curious about it like uh, it's not something that just happens it's actually something you uh, do actively and uh, think you should know about it I can uh, just uh, yeah um, prove that, but um, for me as doing the labor or being part of the labor, I can also say that you 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 don't it's it's best you don't be afraid and you you really um, need to be relaxed and um, whatever you can do, being relaxed helps. And this is something that helps you even after birth and with the child. So this is what Attila is telling me, maybe one time or two times a day. Relax. relax. <laughs> <laughs> and now, two days ago, Una started to tell me, entspann dich. Like, Mom, this, this you relax, I'm going to do this. <laughs> you are such a brilliant family. I really want to have a camera in your house all the time. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> and again, I, th I think if you're prepared well and if you um, if you become confident because you know what's going to happen, you you will be relaxed or more relaxed, and you won't be that afraid. And, or become overwhelmed uh, at one point. I think it does a lot. Yeah. And another thing, even if things changing, especially during labor or even after labor, you need to be adaptive or flexible because with my first um, um, birth or with my first labor, things didn't work out I planned. But if you can just adapt to what's happening and feeling good with it um, because you know there are many ways to get there this helps a lot so yeah 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 it's true that you know that you are in control that those are your decisions and yeah 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 totally totally understand and can uh, yeah all right well, thanks so much for sharing this story. And I love that you were both sharing this story. I think that's, um, yeah, we, you know, we always say that the, it's a teamwork and the partners are so, so, so important. So it's extra special to have both of you sharing the birth story here. Thanks so much for taking the time. Um, beautiful story for others to, uh, to be inspired by, I think. Um, Johanna and, and Attila, if people have any questions, especially also about how to organize a home birth or so, is there anywhere where they can reach you or would you prefer that they send questions to us and we just pass them on and see if you feel like answering them or how, how do you, um, how do um, you, are you prepared? I don't know 
how you distribute it but if you do it on like instagram you can tag me or both of us yeah that's yeah. fine and um just to mention it here there is no such big organization for doing home birth you need some mm -hmm. towels and maybe i don't know a, a, a petsy ball or some some equipment but this is really just I a don't know, tiny thing tiny yeah. thing but it's really being prepared with yourself and yeah. confident with yourself yeah i think as well the hardest thing in germany is to find a midwife yeah. to to have one who offers that uh to have yeah. a home home birth because and have a free it has free slot yeah it's <laughs> really, yeah it's crazy they booked out 10 months ago uh, before like yeah. how do you know 10 months before you <laughs> have a baby <laughs> yeah yeah it's true it's very it's very very hard i think i called 12 or 15 midwives before I finally found one. And at that stage, I didn't even care if I liked her or not. I just, I was just happy that I had a midwife. I just like. Yeah, we were, yeah. We, we were really lucky with ours. Yeah. Like, I, I called, Iris was my first choice, but yes. she said, sorry, I'm fully booked. Mm -hmm. um, and then I really called everyone from the list we have here in this area, everyone. And I. And it was like in week four. No eight, but oh. anyway. It's still early. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Perfect. We'll make sure that we um we link your Instagram accounts as well so that people if they have any questions um can reach out or just simply shower you with a, a bit of love and appreciation. Thanks so much for being with us today. Um really, really cool to hear your story and so nice to see little Oscar. So cool to see the three of you. Um <laughs> For thanks us. for being with us <laughs> and um we look forward to hearing how it's going on with you and then what else happens and when the little one starts to walk get the first picture thanks so much for listening to our mama podcast we would love to see you again so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes also for more information and to stay up to date check our website mamamoon.me and our instagram and facebook <laughs>